Well, good morning. At least it is for me right now. I want to make a quick video to show you how to do VLANs in the Unify platform. Ubiquiti does it a little bit different. Not wrong, just different. I'm going to assume for this video that you already know what VLANs are. You know concepts like tagging and untagged ports. As in, you've done VLANs on other platforms, so I'm not going to spend the time explaining the whole VLAN theory. I just want to show you how to do it on Ubiquity because it will throw you off for a little bit because, again, they approach it different. So, so first off, a little, a little context, a little foundation. I'm going to assume most of you are used to doing VLANs on what I would call normal business grade switches. That is, you've got your, your switch ports right here. You go in, you create your VLAN. Let's just say it's VLAN 10, right? And you, you say, okay, it's created. I'm now going to assign my ports. I got my computers right here. I'm going to put them in VLAN 10, you know, VLAN 10. And those will be my access ports if you're talking Cisco language or untagged ports if you're talking a lot of the other vendors that are out there. And then, and then you'll be like, okay, I need to add another switch over here and, and add some ports to VLANs. So I'm gonna make this a trunk interface if you're talking Cisco switches or a tagged interface if you're talking a lot of other uh, vendors. And then, and then you can tag the VLANs down there. You can tag them to maybe a wireless access point where you got a couple SSIDs that are in different VLANs. That's how you normally do it and Unify doesn't do it that way. So, so with that context, let's look at how they do it. I'm gonna take you back to the controller right there. Um, so first thing you wanna do is you wanna set up your networks and that's done in the general settings, kind of like the global settings for the site, if you will. I'm gonna drop down here to the networks and you'll see that it has the default networks that are created when you first install the controller. Um, now I'm using this in my house right now. So, so that's why I, I feel like it's a mark of shame to use 192.168.1 in a business. So I've got to disclaim, this is in my house. I wouldn't ever do that. But if I wanted to add a VLAN, I just click on create a new network. Now you'll see that Unify tries to package this together for you, um, kind of like automate the process a little bit. So I'm gonna call this one public. Let's say I'm gonna add a public Wi-Fi for my neighborhood, you know, make friends, meet neighbors, free internet, right? So I'm gonna say this is VLAN 10. And so, so first, first, first thing different, it's like, wait a sec, VLANs are a layer two thing. There's no subnet. Well, correct, in, in the traditional business vendor world, you just configure the VLAN and you do the subnet when you configure the routing. Well, Ubiquity is like, let's squish them together into an oatmeal cream pie, right? Let's just have it done at the same time. I don't know where the oatmeal cream pie came from, but but you get the idea. So the subnet will be 10.10.10.0. .10 .10 okay, <laughs> hold the phone. It says subnet, but it doesn't mean subnet, really. It's saying, what is the gateway IP address? This threw me off for a second because I'm used to like, okay, that's the network. No, no, no. They want to configure the router at the same time because if you've got their, their uh, what is it, USG, the, the, the uh, ubiqui is it Ubiquity Secure Gateway, uh, whatever, whatever it stands for, the USG platform, it's like, hey, hey, I'll take care of all that. I'll set up the VLAN. I'll set up your routing for it. I'll set up the subnet. I'll set up DHCP. It's like kind of like a, a little mini wizard right here. I'll set up your domain name for your DHCP scope, right? Um, so I'll just call it public.local. Here's the range. We'll go 10.10.10. .10 .10 let's just say 10 through 10.10.10.250. 10 I have a lot of neighbors, right? They all want to join the public Wi-Fi. So, so you know, names, you could, you could go crazy with this. This, this DHCP setup. And they actually have some pretty sweet features in here, like um, DHCP snooping is what you call that in the Cisco world. DHCP guarding, you know, making sure you don't have those rogue DHCP servers that take down your network and a bunch of other options, right? So I'll hit save. And I've just created the network. Now, this is where the traditional business configuration, you'd be like, okay, let's go to the switch ports. Nope, nope, nope. Can't do that yet. Um, you want to go set up switch port profiles. That's, that's what threw me off for a little while. You go to the profiles, go to switch ports, and notice it's already created two profiles for you. Now, you can't change those. You can't really modify those. You can just look at them. Um, but it's those profiles that you'll use. You, you'll, it'll make sense when I get there. But if you want to just assign an access port or an untagged port into a VLAN, those are the profiles that you'll use. You'll put them in the LAN profile for that 192.168 or, or you'll put them in the public profile for 10.10.10, right? Um, but let's just say I want to set up a trunk port. I don't do that from the switch anymore. I do it from the profiles and assign the port to the profile. Watch this. I'm going to go in and let's just say the profile name. Uh, I'll call this LAN plus public. 
right? Because I'm going to have the LAN be the native VLAN, right? And maybe, maybe in the name you want to be like, you know, something like this, and maybe like this will be the tagged VLAN. Maybe you just have a scheme where you, you just know the first one will be the native, the untagged one on a, on a trunk port, right? And all the rest will be tagged, whatever you want to do. And I don't even, I'm just making up a naming scheme right now. Um, you can name it whatever you want. And, and, and keep in mind, this is a profile. It's got all kinds of settings under it, like PoE. <laughs> like if you want to cook devices <laughs> indiscriminately, go ahead and start flipping on, you know, 24 volt, yeah, don't do that. So we'll just say don't modify. Um, uh, native network will be the LAN, right? Uh, this is the untagged for the trunk port. And if you want to do tag, you can just say, hey, let's do them all. Or, or let's just check the ones that I want. And obviously right now it's one and the same. If you want to do a voice VLAN, you know, to where it's just a single tagged VLAN for, for that port that you have for your voice network, you can do that too for voice over IP phones and a bunch of other advanced options that have very little to do with VLANs whatsoever. Because again, this is a switch port profile. Okay. Okay. Now we're good. Now we've got, it's kind of like the framework is set up. Now we go to the switch ports and make the assignment. So I'm going to go over to my devices, uh, grab my uh, USG24, and there's there's all of uh, the switch ports that I've got. And let's just um, let's just grab I don't know this guy, and I'll click on him. Uh, you can see it's checked right there. Got the little configure button. I'll hit edit and bada bing. This is where, so, so if this were a Cisco switch, this is where I'm typing in switch port access VLAN 10 or switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10, remove, it. that's where you're doing all your, your configuration. But in Unify, you don't do that. You just throw it in the profile. If you want it to be an untagged port, just toss it in one of those guys. If you want it to be a trunk port or a tagged interface, toss it in this or whatever profiles you've configured. And if you're like me, you're like, ah, okay. That's how you do it. That's right right there. That just shoop, connected the synaptics of that's how the other switch vendors do it. And that's how I implement it on Unify. Again, not wrong, just different. It's that simple.